Hi guys and welcome to the Lonely Catch Up. It's myself, Rampant FM, and as always, I'm joined by Mozza. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How's you? Yeah, brilliant. And we also have Kevin Marshall on again. How are you doing, Kev? I'm good, guys. Good. Uh, we did try to get a guest on, you know, a, a different voice in on this week uh, in the shape of the axed Berwick Rangers Twitter guy. Um, you know, nothing really about bashing the club or that because it's not what we're about. Maybe hear about his thoughts on his team's relegation battle, possibility of being in the Lowland League next season. Alas, he never bothered to get back to me, so in the words of Count Beef Manager Gary Bolin, he can take his face for a shite. <laughs> uh, straight off the bat there, guys. Um, so getting into the action, uh, Sean Winter strikes again as all but two fixtures in the Lone League were postponed. I was at one of them and Mozza was at the other, so full coverage of, uh, of the Lone League this week. Um so yeah, I'll start with Friday night's game, the game I was at. Friday night I was over in Falkirk to see East Stirlingshire versus Civil Service Strollers. Uh, I got to the Westfield bar before kick-off and had a couple of pints. Uh, I got sore at. Um, I know the relationship between Fifers and people from Falkirk isn't the best, but a, a bit ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it's just kissing you, it was you. No, uh, <laughs> funny enough, the guy did recognise my voice actually, it did come up, but no... Um, I, I got speaking to a Shire fan called Martin, uh, and he was actually raging at the price of Rod Stewart tickets. Um, (laughs) Very weird way to start a conversation, but I I agreed with him. 90 odd quid uh, was a bit steep, really, you know. (laughs) So we'll get into the game, guys. Um, I headed through. uh, It was a bit weird, actually, because I I think originally when I went with Kelly, I kind of went at main entrance, so I went through the. As a, as a spectator, I went through the turnstiles for once. Uh, um, I like this from Shire, uh, sh- right off the back. Friday night football, the beauty of having floodlights. Obviously causing a bit of a stir there with civil service strollers that I noticed went on to the next day. Uh, <laughs> wee bit of a dig. We'll, we'll maybe talk about it, but I think uh, it was uh, an extension of last week, Mozza. Um, you know, yeah, from the, yeah. the, the tweet uh, that... The strollers, you know, that's uh, the beauty of having your own stadium and stuff. So all that sort of stuff was brought up. So, <laughs> and to be fair, the strollers, it looks like they took it in good humour as well. So, <laughs> I don't know so much about that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but an interesting tweet as a uh, as it was. An early change uh, for East Stirlingshire. Danny Ash came in at right back for Shire as Chris McKee was injured in the warm up. A well-known Shire fan was in fo- fine voice in the first 10, reminding Gary Jardin where his box is. Yeah, his technical area, I should have better word. I, I tweeted out box, but uh, te- technical area, we'll call it, on, uh, not to be crude. So, uh, Civil opened the scoring when a uh, poor defender from Shire allowed Jordan Hopkinson to nick the ball and pass to David Churchill, who got a shot off only for Barkley to palm it in the direction of the incoming Hopkinson for a tap-in. Uh, Shire did say it was against her on a play, but I would argue that it wasn't the case. Uh, sorry, Shire. Uh, it was 2 0, civil, 10 minutes before the break. A long free kick from Kevin Waugh into the Shire box. Managed to get a, uh, they managed to get a cross in, which the Shire defence got a boot to, only for the ball to fall to the path of Churchy, who slotted home. To be honest, uh, civil were cruising. Uh, didn't really get much from Shire but they were given a lifeline just before half time when uh, Josh Donaldson played a short ball out to Kyle Fee Uh, a bit of indecisiveness uh, a lack of composure from Kyle due to the pressure of the oncoming Shire forwards he tried to play it back with uh, Ross Allam intercepting getting on to the end of it and uh, Josh Donaldson bringing him down for a penalty put comfortably away by Paul McCafferty uh, to deduce the deficit Mozza (laughs) <laughs> I did appreciate that little typo was good <laughs> the bother of being on your phone I think I don't know what <laughs> what my phone thinks of me really was I mean what, did I ever use the word deduce I don't think I've ever <laughs> it's just trying to smarten you up a bit obviously oh maybe <laughs> to learn words I um, Shire came out in the second half it seemed to me that maybe Civil kind of kind of the goal might have just sort of knocked the window at them a wee bit Um so they won a corner with uh, Andy Grant getting his head uh, on it to equalise. Usually, obviously, corner green in this situation, but Shire known for their uh, capabilities with set plays. 
I think Sybil, uh, Sybil would have been disappointed with it as there was about three players around him. Uh, it was almost a f- free header, if you will, because you know, Andy Grant's not the, the biggest of players, but nonetheless, it was uh, 2 2. Now, as I mentioned, obviously, it was looking more likely that Shire would go on and take the lead, but this time it was against the run of play. Uh, 70th minute, Andy Mayer hits an excellent ball in the box with Churchy in between two Shire defenders getting his head to it to give Sybil the lead again. Uh, five minutes later, 75th minute, ball out wide to, uh, by Barkley, ball over to Andy Rogers, who just came on, cuts it back to Paul McCarthy, who whips in the box for David Mogoki, who heads it. With some contact uh, from Josh Donaldson, uh, the ball comes back down for Mogoki, who sticks out a leg to equalise for Shire yet again. 3-3, free, free. Uh, hopefully everyone's keeping up with this. Um, three minutes from time Andy Mayer free kick punched away by Barkley uh, balls up in the air no one really clearing it you know uh, eventually it's back on the deck lands at the feet of uh, substitute Ross Guffrey to win it for Civil and if you manage to watch the highlights you will hear the well known Shire fan losing his voice in distress of the situation Uh, RIP the corner flag uh, just incredible scenes from the civil service strollers. They obviously, I think at that point, they just knew the game was probably won. Uh, what a game. Uh, that's two games I've been to uh, to Falkirk Stadium this year. The 3-3 free, free against Kelty. Uh, it was probably up there for one of my games of the season. This is certainly up there as well. Uh, another 4-3 between these two clubs. Absolutely amazing. It sounds like a cracker, and um, these Friday night fixtures, they always seem to serve up some great games. Yeah, there's very few of the Friday night games that have ended up with just a goal or two, is there? They all seem to be pretty exciting, uh, good fare for folk, but uh, it sounds a cracker. Um, if there's one game you'd pick out for it, uh, we built it up last week, didn't we, yep. uh, the game, so... Uh, I'm just happy that I didn't fall flat in my face by building it up, because that tends to be what happens when I pick out a game to watch. Yep, uh like it's one of them things if it had been a, a poor game I think I probably would have been questioning myself why am I going to Falkirk on a Friday night <laughs> but uh, <laughs> not the case at all both teams in fairness to Shire I think it, it could have been a, a different story on a different day as I mentioned on Twitter uh, it was a case of just individual mistakes maybe the team's not clearing their lines uh, but what a fantastic advert for our league the depth, um, we've we've talked about depth in the squads of the likes of East Kilbride, BSC, Kelty, uh, Spartans as well. One thing I don't think we've gave credit for uh, to Civil is their depth. I mean, when we were at the game last week, obviously Churchy was, wasn't was playing because he was suspended. Jordan Hopkinson, I think, was on the bench. Them two guys uh-huh. came in today, uh, with the likes of Kerr Allen, who was brilliant against uh, Sterling Uni, and... Uh, Stephen Froud on the bench and they've came in and just been fantastic uh, so definitely as much as I talked up Spartans last week uh, for their performance against Kelty I think Civil just again uh, well we, we saw them uh, obviously the wind kind of hampered the game against Sterling Uni mate but Andy Mayer Craig Newells uh, I think the unsung hero apart from uh, all them previously mentioned was the likes of Hammy in midfield uh, uh, Jack Downey was doing fantastic, uh, just putting a lot of pressure on Shire. Uh, I think that led to a lot of, you know, the mistakes that opened goals because they were both teams just pressing each other. As I mentioned with the Kyle Fee thing, again, Shire were doing the exact same thing, just pressing them, trying to put them under a wee bit of pressure. Defensively, you know, it's probably not the greatest performance, but, like, when you've got a 4-3 game, and uh, apart from the managers and possibly the, the players who really cares <laughs> <laughs> well it's great entertainment for the neutral as well as the fans that were there maybe not for the Shire fan right enough um, I should point out that's me referring to the one guy I'm not having to go to Shire support yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, no we, we, we marked out as a game that really should be a crack and it turned out that way um, two sides that will fancy their chances are kicking on again Um come the, the new season so we'll, um, we'll see what happens when we roll around again the cup we'll, yep. so we'll see how it all plays out yep uh, for me the battle from second to fifth now is just going to be so tight you know a lot yep. a lot of teams still to play each other um, and obviously a lot of teams still 
you know, uh, going to play East Cobb Bride. I think Strollers and I think BSC still have East Cobb Bride, so I think Strollers are maybe the only one not to have East Cobb Bride coming up, but they've got the like. Yeah, I think Kelty have got them twice as well, don't they? Yep, yeah. So, I'm not, I kind of, I wouldn't say I was writing off Strollers for top four because of uh, sparrings, but certainly I think they can go in having got that result and go forward with a wee bit of confidence. uh, definitely. I'm not going to mention too much about the train ride home. Because uh, <laughs> <I laughs> he doesn't remember it. <laughs> I, I mentioned on Twitter, um, ScotRail, uh, phenomenal <laughs> as ever. Uh, Cancelled the train, had to get a taxi up to Falkirk High. But I managed to get home uh, and again making pals. Uh, spoke to a guy for football for about 40 minutes on the train back to Fife. So good, good day out, I think. <laughs> I think that guy was might have been on the gin though, uh, <laughs> but I, but no, fantastic. Uh, we'll get into uh, Saturday's game, Moza, that you were at. Uh, hopefully, you'll uh, be as comprehensive as us if we want to get the runtime up to normal. But <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you guys, um, for a four-one game, so BSC ultimately ran out four-one when it was over Dalbiti Star. There wasn't too much to talk about, when that sounds really weird to say when there was five goals in it, but. Um, it was a case of pretty much every main chance that came up ended up in the back of the net. Um, I would, I would have probably said if it was a lower score line, it was a game of few chances. So that kind of gives you an idea of how it went. But um, it almost got underway straight away uh, in the the first minute. So straight off, BSC were right in the attack. Uh, got a corner. Declan Hughes floated it up to the back post of Ross Smith, who was winning balls in the air all day. Uh, and his header was cleared off the line. It was hacked clear um, right at the, the last. But um, that was a sign of things to come. So it only took 16 minutes for uh, the first goal. And it was uh, Jamie Mills who actually had a really decent game at left back. Uh, was just His pace was given all sorts of issues um, for Stars defence. He managed to dink a cross over to Tamor who initially miscontrolled but he managed to get himself sorted. Turn around and stick the ball past uh, Vinnie Parker who... Didn't really have a chance with any of the goals, in all honesty. Um, and at the half hour mark, Lewis Sloan, who I'd argue would be Dalby's talisman, uh, went off with an injury, and that was kind of the end of that uh, in a way. That he's he's just the one player that Star have got that can take a game by the scruff of the neck and do what you don't expect him to. And without him, you could tell that a wee bit of confidence went, uh, I think, in the guys that were still on the field. But Aidan Kerr came on and to his credit, had a decent game um, in his place, but only a few minutes after the sub, it was a uh, 2-0 with Hugh Cameron, uh, unfortunately for Dalbiti, putting the ball past his own keeper. It was a, a cracking ball from Jamie McCormack on the right this time, and there was just so much pace and whip in it that any touch from the centre-half or Tam or behind would have ended up in it going in the back of the net, and it just happened that Big Hugh stuck it in right in the bottom corner right enough as well he'd have been proud of it at the other end but um, I won't dwell on it for him so <laughs> um, yeah five minutes for half time it was 3-0 uh, just to, to kill it off at that point really and it was Jamie Mills again squaring it across Tamar struck on goal and it was just a old school stramash the ball bouncing across all over the place and finally it fell to the feet of Martin Paolo Green who managed to stick it away um, and it was about the third or fourth attempt um, <laughs> from this dramash it was going on so good old fashioned Scottish football but uh, yeah 3-0 at half time and at that point you were thinking like it could have been can I any score the second half depending on how Star came out and uh, they came out of the traps absolutely brilliantly and to their credit got themselves right back in the game within a minute of the, the restart there was a it was a bit of a hash, a clean snow, honestly, for BSC. Um, ball bouncing about, and just two or three guys had a chance to put their foot through it, never did. It got to about 25, 20 yards out, edge of the box, and Calvin Cowie just came on to and absolutely smacked a stunner right into the bottom corner. It was a brilliant goal, a uh, great strike for, for Calvin. And it, to be fair, from there on, Star were pretty much level pegging. Uh, the, the rest of the second half and they had a couple of our openings where they could have created and, and fashion chances but uh, 54 minutes on the clock pretty much saw the, the end of the game where um, Martin Green again I'm not quite sure how he managed it but he managed to beat three men pull the ball back 
uh, Vinnie Parker had a chance to get a hold of it, but he spilled it in the end, and Tam Ward did what he does. He was in the right position, the right time, to stick it in the back of the net and uh, end the scoring at that point at 4-1. But uh, I mentioned Starr had, had their chances. The main one was just after the hour mark, where some really nice passing football from that. Actually, I was impressed with the way they, they played. Um, put Lewis Todd through in the box on his own, but Jamie Mills with that pace managed to get across and stick a foot in just in time before he, he got his shot away. Uh, and then the only other real chance I know was 15 minutes left. It was Mills again, running down the left. <laughs> he, he managed to get the dribble on. He went so fast that the boy chased him, just gave up and watched <laughs> him for the, the rest of the chance. Um, he squared that across to Tamor. And unfortunately for Tam, at this point, he's a, his strike was just a bit too weak uh, to trouble Parker, who, who managed to, to bring it in easily enough. But yeah, that was that. Um, I mentioned there, despite the result, I was impressed with Star the second half, because I think a lesser team would have folded and just gone 5 or 6-0 and gone down the road with their heads down. But I, I've got to give credit to them, because they were easily as as good as BSC that second half and they were fighting for every ball and uh, they, they tend to get a reputation as kind of fighters and grinders I think and I don't think that was really fair for the way they played yesterday that they did put some really nice passing moves together and uh, ultimately they only got the one goal and the one really big chance uh, but uh, no it was it was kind of what we expected to happen like BSC Glasgow and Swifty doing the business uh, the main men kind of did their jobs when they had to, but there wasn't really a standout player on show, if that makes sense. It was just a, a kind of team performance, get the result and move on, uh, which is becoming a bit of a hallmark of the, the kind of top two or three in this league that uh, you could probably throw Spartans and Civil into that recent, recently as well, that even if they're not totally on form or totally on song, they just know how to do enough to get the job done and get the three points in the bag. So, uh, yeah, that... Kind of sums it up. Any thoughts? Yeah, just one. It's obviously uh, good to hear that Aidan Kerr uh, had a good game for Dalbiti. I really like the guy because he supports both the teams I do. So he's obviously got a bit of, <laughs> bit of class about him. No, in all honesty, it's not surprising um, to hear the likes of Jamie Mills having a good game, Declan Hughes, uh, Tamor, uh, Paolo as well. It's, it's BSC doing what's kind of expected them at this stage. Obviously, the undefeated streak, four points clear in second. Um, yep. Yeah, just what what we probably expected uh, from what what we were talking about last week. Uh, but it's easier said than done, and I think uh, especially after a wee bit of break, uh, BSE again deserve credit for going out and taking their chances and getting a comfortable win. Really, uh, it's a, a wee bit unfortunate. I only found out that that game was actually still on, uh, and it was just a wee bit too late for me to to make it there in time. So. I ended up uh, sitting in the house watching Jeff Sterling and Co, which is no all it's cracked <laughs> up to be, trust me. Um, so I was a wee bit disappointed that I didn't make that game in time. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, on paper anyway, you would have expected BSC to win that anyway. Uh, the kind of conditions they would have been playing in would have made it difficult. But I think that's a huge three points for them, um, especially considering the, the teams around about them weren't they playing yesterday. And... You know, at, at this stage of the season, points on the board, I think, are probably more important than, than uh, games in hand. So uh, they would be glad to get that, the business done, get away there with the uh, with the three points in their back pocket. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I know you mentioned Jeff Stelling there. If you ask Michael Park, he might say that Jeff's got better chat than me, <laughs> so he might have made the right decision staying in that day. But, um, no, it was, I need to give a shout-out to Matthew Hollingworth as well, who was along from Saucy. Um, given that their game was called off, he made an appearance and um, got a bit of chat with him. I know Matthew going back a wee bit anyway, but um, seems to be a bit of a, a kind of... We'll get into this later on because we mentioned we'll chat about the East of Scotland, but there's more and more integration happening and more and more kind of contacts being made, I think, between clubs in London and East, and it can only be a good thing, especially these older junior clubs that are now looking to progress in the pyramid. Absolutely, I, I don't think anybody can afford to be operating in their own wee silo now. The the um, this kind of cross population of the, of the leagues, I think, is probably a good thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, the final thing, just before we move on, a shout out to Lloyd Pipe who came on with fifteen minutes left for Star, 
um, because, well, the, the consensus in the press box was that he looked under the age of 16, so he <laughs> might well be one of the younger players that's ever played for Star. And I know you've got to be 16 to play in the league, so I'm assuming there's no dodgy birth certificates going around because he just <laughs> he just looks like a young boy. But um, he acquitted himself well when he came on. Um, not a guy that I'd actually been aware of, in all honesty, so um, I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye and see if he keeps getting a game and uh, see how he develops as well. Yep, uh on Saturday, I, I woke up. I, I was similar to yourself, Kev. I probably would have been at the game, uh, but I kind of woke up a bit late. Um, saw the snow outside, didn't really fancy it. So my Saturday, I watched or listened to the Rangers game, if depending on who's listening, and uh, I caught a bit of the rugby. Uh, later that night, I think I watched a German film, which is less sinister than what you guys are probably thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I was it was actually pretty good. It was about uh, Sophie Scholl, who was a university student uh, at Munich, who stood up to the Nazis by distributing uh, leaflets criticising the state. It uh, doesn't have a happy ending, spoiler alert. But a uh, good watch, great dialogue, even though it's in German, which I wouldn't say I'm fluent in. Uh, I think it was nominated for an Oscar at the time it came out for Best Foreign Film, maybe 2005 or something. Highly recommended if that's your sort of thing. I'm not actually 100% sure why I had to reveal all that to everyone, but that was my Saturday night. So welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Lonely Catch-Up and Film Review. <laughs> I know, it was, it was a really good watch. I, I, it deserved a mention, uh, you know. <laughs> so considering we only had two games there um in the Lowland League and uh, the fact that, you know, we're, we're coming towards the end of the season now. I think we will give some uh, notice to the East of Scotland game. So the East of Scotland obviously um, were affected. They had one game. It was uh, St Andrews versus Broxburn Athletic. 14 minutes in, Jack Beasley opened the score in for Broxburn. 30 minutes on the clock and Greg Binney puts Broxburn 2-0 up. Uh, just before half time, Jack Beasley finds the net again for a brace to make it 3 0 Broxburn. And four minutes into the second half, it must have been unfortunate, but an unfortunate own goal puts Broxburn four up. It was actually um, Broxburn's Twitter that said it was an unfortunate own goal for St Andrews. So if they're saying it's unfortunate, it must have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, uh, Broxburn. Eight clear of Lifke Rose in Conference C, having played two more games. Uh, certainly look like they're in the playoff picture for the Lone League, uh, you know, um, depending on licensing and whatnot. Well, mathematically, Genefield and Camelin are still uh, possibilities to, to overtake them, but really they would need a bit of a collapse for, for Broxburn if that was to happen. I think probably uh, them and Lifke are the only two really that are in contention in, in that league or that conference now. Um, the only thing I think that might come into play is Broxburn have got three games left and they're all on the road and they've, they've played all of their home games. So that's maybe the only factor that might uh, have an influence. Um, and like I say, Lynn Lithgow are there um, breathing down their neck. I think Broxburn probably need eight points uh, out of the nine to be absolutely certain because Lithgow have got a slightly better goal difference. Um, so it's going to go all the way, that one, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think, to be honest with you, if you'd given Camelon and Genefield a place in the East of Scotland Premier next year at the start of the season, they'd have gone, nah, we'll have that. Uh, absolutely. So they'll be yeah. delighted with where they are. Uh, especially Camelon, it's a team that I know quite well that that was their aim going into the season. So they'll be made up with where they are. I just, I can't really see Broxburn throwing this away now because I've been so consistent Um up to this point in the season. Lithgay, and on the league front, they've been pretty consistent, but they've had a couple of dodgy showings in the Cups. So it's one of these things that you just... Obviously, they're the the team that were the favourites going into this conference, I think, this season. Yeah. Um, it, Brogsburn have just... Like, when you look at their record, that's 19 wins and two losses. You can't do much more than that, can you, to to push for a, for a championship? So... They're where they deserve to be on merit, and I, I think they'll probably see it through now um, to be one of the three playoff teams in the East. Uh, and a suggestion, uh, just to make sure this goes the running distance, uh, having not much to talk about, guys, uh, from Michael Booth, uh, who DM'd me on Twitter. Um, 
we obviously like that people getting in contact uh, suggestions and whatnot and people obviously getting back to us unlike uh, that Berwick Rangers admin guy who got sacked um, <laughs> not better <laughs> <laughs> nope uh, so we'll mention the, a game that caught my eye I don't know if all uh, if there was a lot of the South of Scotland games went ahead, but certainly um, Lockhart Fissile versus uh, Bonneton Fissile, um, third versus second in the South of Scotland. Uh, we'll cover that. Uh, Bonneton took the lead uh, on the stroke of half time through David Stevenson. Quick free kick and a 30 yard shot beats the keeper at the near post. Uh, a pretty tight first half affair, I think, uh, and a cold and windy Dumfries. Uh, apparently they had a bit of luck uh, to, to to get that goal. I think we'll we'll, we'll mention that. Uh, Seventy two minutes. Uh, it was two 0 Bonneton as Chris Kerr converts from the penalty spot. Um, by I think both teams kind of admitted that it was uh, kind of two cruel, contentious decisions, uh, which resulted in both goals: the first a free kick and the second a penalty. And uh, great to see four 17-year-olds starting as well uh, for, I think that was Lockhart. Bonneton, two points away from Stranraer Reserves, having played two more games. When we last had a look at the South of Scotland, Moza, it looked like Stranraer Reserves, who obviously uh, I don't think they can get promoted to the Lone League. It looked like they were running pretty much away with the South of Scotland at a point, but uh, Bonneton doing really well to sort of come back. Yeah, Bonneton, you've got to give them credit, like, it still looks like it's in our reserves league, to be honest, because they've drawn one game and won all the rest, and they've got a couple more to catch up right enough. But we were just talking about the old junior teams coming in, and Bonneton's the other style uh, club that's came into the pyramid, the, kind of, the youth system that's now putting a senior team in a park, so it's a kind of, almost like a brand new senior side, you know, so it's uh, the very much the other side of the coin, but... Again, they've came in doing it the right way and it looks like they're getting a fair bit of success in the park as well. And the, a cracking facility getting built up as well, just outside Kelly. But um, they deserve a, a ton of credit for the development they've done the last year or two. Um, the, it's not out with the realms of possibility that they could win that league and I believe their application for a licence is ongoing as well. But um, the likelihood is, I think, that Stranraer hold on there and that would mean it would just be the East of Scotland competing for this Lowland spot um, for the the coming season. I think um, looking at the at the league table, it's um, you know there there has been a fair few changes from uh, from how it finished last season. I'm um, just looking there. Steve Rovers are, are way down bottom half of the table, and they actually they won that league last season. So it just shows you how um, how quickly things turn around and uh, at this sort of level. Uh, and I think you're right in saying that Bonneton were were a fair bit behind at one point, uh, and they've got themselves right back in contention. So um, yeah, it certainly looks like uh, they they could uh, they could push Stranraer all the way there. Yeah, because now that we've looked at the the south of Scotland, it'd be a miss not to look at the other two conferences in East as well to see what other teams are going to be in uh, playoff and promotion contention, wouldn't it? So um, like this is where your expertise will come in, Kev. So. Um, we look at, but I guess Conference B would be the easiest one to start with, with Bonnie Rig pretty much ruling the roost. Yeah, I think Bonnie Rig are, are, are uh, champions in waiting there, really. Um, I did catch their game last week uh, against uh, against Dundonald. Finished 3 uh, 1 to Bonnie Rig. Uh, again, it was, it was, we seem to be a recurring theme here with the, with the weather, but it was a bit of a difficult day. It was quite windy, the pitch was still quite sticky. Um, and three one, without being unkind to them, maybe flattered Bonnie Rig a little bit. Uh, I think it's safe to say they they won the game quite comfortably. Um, but Dundonald were were still in it right up to to maybe a couple of minutes for the end. It was two one. Uh, they did have the ball in the net uh, to to make it two each, although that was eventually ruled out because the the ball had gone out behind the byline uh, before it was crossed in, and then. Rose, as, as sometimes happens, uh, went straight up the park and, and scored and made it 3-1. Um, so probably deserved to be uh, the winner in the end, but it, it could have been it could have been a draw, and you wouldn't have been too um, I wouldn't have been too unkind on uh, on Don Donald if it had been a draw. Uh, but it certainly looks now like they only need a couple of points to to win that, and uh, they're, they're 18 points ahead of Bonus in second place. So. To me, it's only a matter of time yeah. uh, before they get that done. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then conference say it's a wee bit tighter, so it's more like the conference seat we looked at earlier on with uh, Pennycook at the top with um, a team that, you know, well rampant, uh, Hillabeath kind of chasing them, Musselburgh as well. Uh, even that and Star, you could say, are in with an outside shout there. So, um, again, uh, most of those clubs, if not all of them, are in the licence process just now. Fingers crossed that all gets through, but um, how do you see that playing out as well? Well, I, I saw, I did catch uh, Hillabeath versus Newton Grange a couple of weeks ago, a midweek game. Uh, Newton Grange won two now, so that put a, d- a bit of a dent in in Hillabeath's hopes there, uh, and it probably um, dragged Nitton back up into the into contention there. But again, it, it probably looks like it's Penny Cooks uh, to lose. So just looking at the table there, they're five points ahead of Hillabeath uh, on the same number of games. Um, so I, I think you would really be looking for them to to slip up now at this stage. Uh, for any other, any one of the other teams to to get into contention there, I would think. Brilliant. Um, and just to add further, Kev, you were obviously at the a game midweek. I think it's important for us to maybe highlight it. Uh, do you want to sort of talk us through it? Uh, I will do. Aye, aye. It was um, it was a, a game, a, a memorial game for Conor Aird and Ethan King. Now, for those that don't know the. The background there, there are a couple of um, 17-year-old kids, young men, who were uh, were killed in a car crash back in um, November last year. Uh, both of them from the, the Glen Rothis area and both um, quite promising uh, young players uh, at that level. Um, so the, the circumstances were obviously pretty tragic, but... Uh, what it did do is that a lot of their, their ex-teammates and, uh, and schoolmates and colleagues and things like that got together uh, and, and organised this fixture. Uh, it was postponed originally uh, back about the turn of the year. It was played on Tuesday night. Um, i got to thank Wraith Rovers for allowing them to use Starks Park. Um, if anybody remembers the weather on Tuesday night in, in the Fife area, they'll remember it was... Uh, <laughs> It wasn't very nice at all. It's it Storm Gareth, I think it was. Um, high winds, heavy rain, freezing cold. But it was a cracking game, actually. Uh, about 1,100 people turned up to pay tribute to the guys. Uh, first minute, Ewan Belford um, scored. Just caught the defence out. Um, beat them um, comfortably. Uh, rounded the keeper and, uh, and clipped over him to, to open the scoring in the first minute. Um, he could have you and Belford could have had a second just a couple of minutes later from the penalty spot after Zach Cairns had pulled him down, uh, but he tried to be a wee bit too clever and uh, dink it over uh, the the keeper. Um, the keeper dived, but we still managed to to get back and recover in time and stop it on the line. Um, Belford then did get a second on the twelve minutes. Uh, again, just busting clear of the defence, uh, beating them for pace and a, a really nice finish for the edge of the box. And at that point in time, it, it looked like um, uh, Glenn Rothis um, Athletic were, were going to run away with it. Um, but to be fair, Kirkcaldy Eagles kind of played their way back into the game uh, and they got one back on the 25th minute. Jake Emerson uh, scored in that one. And then two minutes at the back of that, uh, Stevie Jeffries um, got the, the equaliser and from that point on it was actually quite an even game it was pretty end to end two each at half time uh, second half uh, Eagles came out flying Josh Sinclair uh, nodding home a corner just five minutes after the restart uh, which I have to say at that point in time uh, I couldn't believe that was a score having having watched the first 15 minutes of the game where um, where uh, Glen Rothis were all over them. But uh, they, they had the lead then. Uh, Mark Baker made it 3-3 in the 58th minute. And by this time, the weather was getting really, really bad. Uh, I kind of started to get the feeling that it wasn't going uh, to go the distance. Um, if you do go online and have a look at any of my, my photos for the match, there's a... I've got a shot that I really like of uh, the the far side linesman standing in front of an empty stand, and there's the the wind and rain whipping off the stand roof, uh, and he's standing there just on his tod getting soaked. I've got to say it's probably <laughs> the only time in my life 
that I've ever felt sorry for a linesman. <laughs> 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 uh, but there was just enough time for uh, Gina Kyra to score the winner before the ref went across, had a word with the two benches, and I think enough was enough uh, at that point. And that was probably uh, the, the right the right call at that time because it was getting really bad and um, uh, you know there's, there was always a chance of injuries and stuff like that so it probably finished maybe about 15 minutes early uh, and 4-3 to um, to Glen Rothis Athletic who is the team that the, the two guys have played for so uh, a fitting tribute to the guys and a, a fitting uh, a fitting scoreline as well uh, just Got to say a, a, a bit of a shout out to, to Marco Valente, who was the guy who did most of the organising. Um, and, you know, I think not, not only Marco, but all of the guys, I think um, they, they carried themselves well. And what was obviously a different, difficult set of circumstances yeah. for them, they did a presentation afterwards to the parents of uh, the two guys and presented them with, with some memorial strips and things like that. And I think all the guys. The other guys that I spoke to certainly said that was you know I'd helped them to to get through a difficult time and then, and things like that. Uh, but for me, I, I felt that um, you know there was there was some good young talent on show. I've got a couple of names here that's maybe I know a lot of people like to to look out for the next big thing coming through. Um, so you and Belford, uh, I mentioned uh, a couple of really composed finishes. A uh, young guy, John Smith, and, and him and Belford seem to be linking up really well. A lot of good passing between the two of them. Uh, and another guy, uh, Mark Baker, who got, I think it was the third goal for Glen Rothis. Um, so he was always, you know, willing to take a player on and looking to commit somebody. Uh, and then for, for Kirkcaldy, a young guy, Steve Jeffries, on the, the left wing, a uh, loads and loads of pace, always had a trick in him and always seemed to be able to deliver a, a decent ball at the end of it. So, you know, four four young guys there that uh, hopefully could go into big things in the game. I don't think... Uh... Gilnorothus and Gilnorothus Strollers will thank you for saying that out, to be fair, because <laughs> they'll be looking to build our squads for the East of Scotland next year now. I'm sure they will be, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get a wee kickback if you sign any of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, mate, obviously uh, I was glad I couldn't go. I think when I was uh, uh, planning originally to go, but I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, I think it got postponed and I obviously couldn't make it on uh, Tuesday, but... Yeah, uh, you've already mentioned that a fitting tribute to the two young lads that that tragically lost their lives, and uh, I think yeah. um, I think some of the boys through here, uh, obviously from Fife and that, I think they might have knew Connor and Ethan as well. So uh, obviously a difficult one for them, uh, being friends and whatnot. But uh, yeah, just tragic. But eleven hundred people turning up. Uh, and a, a, a game, poor conditions and everything, uh, the, I think the boys would have been proud and uh, obviously not easy for the families, but it sounded like the, the, everyone put in a really good effort and I'm, I'm sure the boys would have been uh, happy. Absolutely, yeah, getting 1,100 folk and that kind of weather and that kind of night is an absolutely fantastic effort, so fair play to everyone involved. Uh, so just before we move on to uh, next week's fixtures, I have... Done a wee bit of research, uh, knowing that <laughs> two two fixtures, uh, the Lowland League might have not cut the cut the mustard uh, with the 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 length of these episodes. So um, I put out a tweet yesterday, um, a bit of trivia for you. I wonder if you know the answers. Um, only four teams have went on to win games when losing at halftime this season in the Geosonic Lowland League. Uh, but which team has completed the most comebacks from a losing position? The teams are BSC Glasgow, Civil Service Strollers, Shire and Gala Feridine Rovers. Uh, what are your thoughts, Mozo? I'd guess Shire. Cool. Uh, Kev? Uh, that's a tough one. I would have said maybe BSC. Yous are both incorrect. It was actually, <laughs> I thought so. uh, it was actually Civil Service Strollers who have came back four times from losing uh, at half time to go on to win the games BSC have done it three times uh, which is quite remarkable you wouldn't expect that you know them to be that high uh, given the fact mm. of the the run and everything but you know well well played to Swift in that and Shire and Gala Feridine have both done it twice um, 
so that's just a, maybe a warning apart from them, them few teams to just don't be losing at half time for, for, that, for the other 11 teams, you know. <laughs> I think the likes of, you know, obviously East of Colbride, I don't think they've ever been in a lose, losing position at half time, so that's probably why. <laughs> they seem to always play one or two in a lot, do they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got another wee bit of fun trivia for you. Uh, Kev, you might get this right away, actually, a bit of a hint for you. Uh, Spartans are known for Jobby Gate, but which current Lowland League side uh, have also had a Jobby Gate? No, I have no idea, mate. Um, Kelty Hearts, uh, back in the east of Scotland, uh, there was an incident with, uh, I think it was when they were against Peebles Rovers. Oh, right, aye. aye. <laughs> you know what I'm Not talking about the park. I do know, aye, sorry. I was, I was a bit slow on the uptake there, aye, aye. That was not on the park, though. No, no. Um, but it was actually uh, branded as Jobby Gate, which I couldn't <laughs> believe. I was like, really? I, I'd heard about the incident, obviously. If, uh, I'm sure the Kelly boys listening will know what I'm referring to. But uh, <laughs> So basically, I, I can't remember the scoreline, but they, they, they will beat. Uh, People's Rovers and uh, People's Rovers fan committee member, you know, or ex committee member or whatever, uh, depending on who you're asking, uh, sent um, Jordan Sheeran, who's now at Cowden Beef, uh, Gaz Layton. It would be Gaz, wouldn't it? And uh, <laughs> and uh, Inchy, uh, some unpleasant stuff in the in the post. So. Yeah, um, you've got to feel sorry for the post day as well. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just I I couldn't. I'm sure I, I was looking up something and that came up, and I was like, wait. So the original Jobby Gate. Uh, sorry to destroy the Spartans Twitter guy's ego here, but he, he never came up with the term. Or <laughs> <laughs> I suspect there's been a couple other Jobby Gates in Scottish oh, football gosh. at some point. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so yeah, I, funny, funny. That's just a uh, really weird. <laughs> it's one of them weird <laughs> sort of football, Scottish football stories that you'd probably only get in Scotland, really. Um, <laughs> so uh, just speaking about Kelty there, uh, Sean Spedden was at Kelty's training. He got managed to get a word with uh, Stephen Husband. So we'll listen to that just now. Obviously, ignore uh, the stuff when he's talking about Cumbernauld Colts because the game was postponed. Uh, <laughs> just probably you could whoever they're playing next, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, um, just replace Colts with whoever they're playing next. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm joined by Stephen Husband from Kelty Hearts. How are you doing today? I'm good. Um, I am just going to cover off a couple of questions for you then. Um, from a personal standpoint, how are you finding it playing at Kelty in the Lowland League this season? Well, obviously it's a big change for uh, the East Scotland League. Um, it's far more competitive and the standards are uh, very, very good, so uh, it's, it's only a good thing, it's good for us, um, it's good for a challenge every week, uh, we know we've got to be up for it, we know teams don't want to let us play, uh, we find it hard to break them down, so we've got loads of challenges in uh, every game, so I think uh, the lads have said they're enjoying this season. Brilliant. Um, Spartans last Friday must have been quite a frustrating one for you to, to not come away with any points in that game. What, what was the biggest challenge in that game for for you guys? I think going into it, we've, we've come off uh, the back of a good, good few results, scoring a lot of goals. Um, we just never really started and obviously you're playing one of the top teams in that league um, and you don't really get away with, with playing like that. So I think the most frustrating thing about the game was we never, we never played the way we know we could play uh, to any real standards. So, I think it's disappointing when you come up against the bigger teams. Uh, if you don't, if you're not at it, then I think that's the most disappointing thing. Okay, and you are playing obviously against Cumbernauld Colts this weekend. Um, they're a team that you had a really exciting game earlier on in the season. Cumbernauld ended up just pinching it at the end, I think. Uh, game finished three two. How are you preparing for for the game this Saturday? It was a really open game the last time. I remember it. Um, I think I, th- I think we were ahead. And I, th- I think. They could have been felt a bit hard done, but I think a draw would have probably been a fair result. But fair, fair play to them. They went to the end. I think we lost their all, uh, and they managed to get the winner. So we know that they can keep going. We know what to expect. We know um, they won't they won't go away. So it's uh, it's going to be a really interesting one this weekend for us. Absolutely. So Kelty are currently sitting third in the league, um, brand new to the brand new to the Lowland League, but also a very ambitious um, team, Kelty Hearts. How? 
How successful do you think this season has been for Kelly? I think at the start of the season, I think uh, to get anywhere in that top four with the teams that uh, we know we're coming in, in with uh, would have been a great great thing. But probably for, for a club point of view, seeing where we were at Christmas, um, I think I think we've, we've done good, we've done well, but I think there's uh, easily points that we've dropped that could have us higher in the table. Uh, silly points, silly draws, but that's just part of this league and learning. And uh, Hopefully it builds us into a stronger team for the rest of the games this season and uh, obviously going on to next season. You've got a good run of games coming up towards the end of the season. Is there any that stand out to you that, that you're really looking forward to? I think I think the way the league is, I think um, regardless of the teams we're playing, it's all about three points for us now. Um, obviously everybody's got to jump at East Coast Bright games and it will be good to, to finally play them. It's been a long time coming, but um, no, Cumber and always going to be a tough test for us at the weekend. Um, We've got several still to play as well, so we've, we've got really, really good teams to play. Um, so I think it's, it's just important we focus on every game individually, and it is about the points for us. So. Absolutely. And just to, to round off this, is there a standout player you'd say you played against this season? Who who would it be? We had to name one. I think uh, I think there's there's been a lot of good players and 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 most of the teams we've played. Um, and that, that's probably been the most surprising thing, obviously coming to the East Scotland League where uh, the standard wasn't as good. I think uh, there's a lot, a lot of players in this league that could, uh, that could really hurt you, so it's hard to pick out one. So obviously um, uh, we want to thank Sean for, uh, and Kelly for uh, allowing us to get that interview with Stephen Husband there. We'll move on to next week's fixtures. We'll start with uh, Velo Levin versus East Stirlingshire. Uh, <sighs> I'm going to go with a few absolutes on this one and I'm going to go with Shire. I think Shire is the most likely winners out of this one. Um, obviously, it depends on the state of the park. Uh, there's been a couple of water logins at Victoria Park recently, so we'll see if the, the game makes it. But um, the other reasons on these sides you can't count out are getting something. So it'll be... I, I don't know if it'll be high scoring, but it'll be certainly a game to keep an eye on. Yeah, I, I thought I would agree with that. I think um, certainly Shire have been involved in some high-scoring games uh, the last few while, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is another big one as well. Uh, but I would certainly fancy them to, to, to take the points there. Right? Uh, another absolute for me, Civil Service Strollers versus Gala, Ferradin Rovers. I'm sorry, Gala, but seen several the last couple of weeks, really impressed with them. Uh, they're, they're heading either... Staying in top four or possibly further, I think they're at the same points as Kelty now. Uh, Kelty have got a game in hand over them. Uh, I'd fancy them at Christie Gillis Park. Yeah, I'd agree with that, I think. Um, given that, well, we saw them uh, the the weekend before the one we are just in, and then they had a cracking result on Friday night as well. Banging form, you'd expect them to go and get another three points here, I think. Yeah, full house. Uh, I, I can't see past uh, civil service for that one, no. Gretna 2008 versus Whitehill Welfare. I think uh, it's another one for Whitehill that they obviously they need the wins now, but I'm going to go with Gretna 2008. I, oh, it's a really tough one given that both teams have missed games with the weather so much recently. It it probably will boil down to who's got a wee bit less rust and who wants it more. Um, Gretna can be one of the better sides in the league or one of the worst sides in the league on their day. It just depends what side comes yep. along and uh, if they get a man sent off, really. But, um, yeah, you'd you'd think Gretna would be the favourites, uh, just purely down the league record. Yeah, I think if you're a White Hill fan, you're probably looking at this one and thinking this is a chance to maybe save a wee bit of pride this season. So I wouldn't write them off entirely, but, um, you know, I, I feel Gretna are probably lower in the league than you would expect them to be so I, I yeah. could probably see them edging that one and just a shout out we actually I actually missed the opportunity uh, in our previous podcast but Gretna have been playing obviously a lot of friendlies because they've not been playing in the Lone League but they played a team I think it was just Gretna Amateurs and honest to god they've got an absolutely beautiful badge I think they were founded just last year but their badge is like a lion and for some reason I just really liked it so big fan of Gretna Amateurs there <laughs> had to get that out <laughs> so um, potentially a title winning game uh, East Kilbride versus Cumbernauld Colts yeah we've got to go with the Colts on that one I think 
<laughs> no, um, no, he's called Bride. Uh, Sean Winter, uh, his fault for the postponements. I think he wanted to win the, the title on the field. So, <laughs> no, he's called Bride. I expect them to, to clinch the title this weekend. Kilby's are only allowed to win the title this weekend if we get that floss out of him when he scores. <laughs> Simple as that. Even, even if it's the <laughs> celebration at the end, just I'll speak to the guy that runs uh, EKTV and just make sure we get we get that floss from him. Promise is a promise. <laughs> promise is a promise. But no, to, to can I get back to the, the kind of serious side of things? You can't, you can't see Colts doing anything there, can you? Um, just because Kilby are just so, so good at home. And just getting a job done, even if it's a one 0 or two 0 it doesn't matter. Though they'll do what they need, need, need to do most of the time. Yeah, I mean they've been they've been ruthless, they've been relentless all season long, and uh, I can't see that uh, that game being any different. They'll be Star versus Kelty Hart. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not. Sh- I was. I'm probably. I don't know if I'm going to make this one. Uh, I've not told Kelty Hearts that yet, but they'll probably hear when <laughs> the podcast goes out. Um, it's a, a long trek for Kelly, but I think uh, they should probably get the get the win over Del B. I think. Yeah, it's it's got a weird complexion to this one, though. Um, given that both times that Del B. have played Kelly, they've managed to get them to a draw um, in the league and also in the cup, then get hammered an extra time, didn't they? Um, in that cup tie, but it's yeah, you you. T- you need to put Kelty as the favourites, but I certainly wouldn't count Del Beatty out. Uh, one of the other things for the BSC game, Barry Ferguson and Bob Malcolm were in attendance, scouting Del Beatty. Uh, so we'll have a good idea what to expect. Yeah. Um, they're clearly giving them the respect they deserve by doing that as well. Um, so we'll see if it was worth it when we talk about it next weekend. Yeah, I mean, there, were, there was a fair bit of, speak, uh, bit of discussion in, on last week's podcast about bogey teams and maybe Dal B is Kelty's bogey team but certainly for uh, for any team looking to finish in that the top three or four places every game now is a must win game and this yep. is definitely a must win game for Kelty so uh, and I can't see them uh, not beating Dal B yeah um, I, the first game of the season uh, at home Dal B done really well I think it was a 2-2 draw if I remember right I yeah, wasn't was at there. the Scottish Cup game at Islecroft, but I was at the the replay where Cargie scored that just that amazing goal. Um, I think they'll be were kind of well beaten on that day, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I kind of expect Kelly to to go out and beat Delby. But certainly, as you guys mentioned, uh, they they they, ha- they wore a wee bit of a, a a bogey team up until that point, especially in the league. Um, mm. We do have a, a Tuesday game, if my dates are correct, um, or working them out, rather. Uh, East Kilbride, potential champions versus uh, the current holders, Spartans. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> East Kilbride, <laughs> East Kilbride might not have not much to play for. I'm sure, apart from obviously bragging rights or whatever, maybe of uh, gaining the, the title from Spartans. But I was impressed with Spartans when they played Kelty. I think it's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a, a really good watch. I uh, think, if I remember correctly, uh, we might be going over Moza. If um... yeah, yeah, I think myself, you, and Sean were talking about going, weren't we? So um, we'll obviously get into it in a bit more depth next week in the podcast. Anyway, depending on if Kelby have sealed the title, and um, because that might well change the way that game plays out. Yeah. But uh, either way, I'd be looking for it to be a decent game of football to watch for the neutral. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. As you say, Kelby could have had it, could have it in the bag by then. Uh, if you're Spartans, you're you're wanting to kind of go out with a, a wee bit of pride, um, relinquishing your title. So you know it's maybe worth a wee cheeky fifty pence uh, on on an away win there. You never know. <laughs> I just realised I, I can't actually go um, because Jack Smith banned me from watching Spartans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I probably count the right if I'm there because he always scores when I watch him. So yeah, so sorry, Jack Smith, if I turn up the game and you didn't score, mate. Um, uh, so that's pretty much rounds up everything. I think we've we're done all right for time. Uh, I need to do a shout out to the Royal Hotel Bar and Restaurant in Pennycook. We'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> no explanation why I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm sure the guy will be listening and he'll appreciate it. Um, Twitter DMs open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yep, uh, a bit of, a bit of patter there, uh, inside joke sort of stuff. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we've kind of I think we've done no bad for the considering we've you know two games and uh, and kind of quickly covered east of Scotland, south of Scotland, and the the the, the, memo- the memorial game to the to the boys as well. Uh, a bit of trivia thrown in there as well. So. Uh, before we end it, we'll uh, do our usual plugs. I'll let you go first, Moza, as always. Yep, yeah, um, and it never changes. It's at Moza Plays on Twitter, where you'll find me for anything else, for that matter. So, uh, how about yourself, Kev? Yep, it's um, at KM Photo. That's K A Y E M Photo. Uh, you'll find me on Twitter, Facebook, and also on uh, Flickr, where you'll see all of the the match photos there and the website is kmphoto.co.uk where you'll see all the uh, the match blogs and just the, the general nonsense that I, that I talk <laughs> and uh, you can find me at Rampant FM you can also get the uh, official catch up on Twitter at official catch up and we'll give a shout out since he's not here uh, to the Facebook I think it's just a lonely catch up on Facebook uh, for Sean yeah. so yeah uh, if, Obviously, great having yourself on again, Kev. Um, yep, great to be on. Thanks for having me. I know worries. Thanks for coming. And obviously, Moza, I'm kind of stuck with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get rid of me now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kidding, mate. It's obviously uh, good to speak to you uh, every weekend as well. Uh, Sean, I think he might be in the next episode. I think he was working the day so he couldn't be. He's kind of more of a regular now, obviously, with helping with Facebook and interviews and everything. Uh, I think we're getting uh, a few interviews midweek with a, another lonely club. Uh, not going to reveal in case it falls through, but um, yeah, uh, obviously we're we're trying to do our best to to keep our coverage up to bring more of the Lowland here. Um, and just uh, before we forget, in case you've not been doing so already, follow the podcast Twitter at Official Catch Up. And um, because that's where you'll find all the features that we've done with Shire recently and um, with any other clubs that come along as well, just the little interviews here and there. Um, just all the Lowland coverage we can get you, basically. Right, and a good bit of part from the guy that runs it as well. So, um... <laughs> arguably. <laughs> No, <laughs> we obviously want to thank everyone that listens, the the clubs for their support, the the players, uh, the fans, uh, the managers as well. Yeah, just everyone that listens, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Cheers, bye.